Hi, folks. Welcome back to The Pulse. A few weeks ago, the FDA sent out warning letters to a couple supplement companies stating that NMN could no longer be sold as a dietary supplement. Uh, however, since then, we've been hearing uh, from experts in the industry that if they're selling NMN, they should continue doing so. And many supplement companies, most supplement companies, have continued to sell the NMN supplement. Uh, David Sinclair has been uh, annoyingly almost quiet on the topic the entire time, and he finally released a letter on social media yesterday, Twitter, Instagram. You can go look it up. Many of you are, have already seen it. As a matter of fact, Brad Stanfield, Dr. Brad, um, gave a very good explanation of the letter, his take on the letter, and I thought he did a very good uh, video on this. And by the way, Brad, congratulations on the birth of your second child. I'm sorry that you're staying up late uh, to have to deal with this, but the rest of us are too right now. It's a big story, but he, he did an excellent job reading this. But I'm also reading this. I took a little more time, uh, sort of watched Brad's video, sort of thought about it, read it several times, investigated a few things to sort of get my head around this a bit further. I wanted to offer you a few extra insights. And then like a ton of bricks, a couple things hit me hours after I initially read the letter. And I'm going to share those with you. But there are a couple things that are very obvious about this letter that don't leap off the page when you first read it. Uh, and maybe you'll notice them as I go through this. Uh, regardless, I'll, I'll read through it. I'll give you my comments on the sections. There are only eight paragraphs. Bear with me. It's not so long. On November 4th, 2022, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, published a letter regarding the marketing and sales of nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN as a supplement to boost NAD levels. I am deeply grateful for your patience while I've gathered information to share with you about the impact of this decision. I know many of you are worried about what this news means about the safety of NMN, as well as the possible limitations to the availability of NMN supplements. Um, first of all, why it took him six weeks to gather his thoughts on this. I, I mean, we all know why. You know, this this whole letter, this whole situation with a company uh, that we're going to talk about here in a second, Metro Biotech. And uh, it's got his fingerprints all over this topic and this letter. And he's been avoiding it. It doesn't make him look particularly good. And you know, in some ways, I can't blame him. In some ways, it's really been a slap in the face to those of us who have followed his routines and are taking NMN, among the other things that he spelled out in his protocols. Now, I want you to understand that I'm reading through this, and I'm critiquing David Sinclair on this, and I don't agree with his stances on this. However, I'm still very grateful for the videos that he's made and the messages he's sent out. Doesn't mean I'm putting him on a pedestal. Uh, I'm certainly criticizing these moves by him. And, uh, but, but I don't think it's fair to say that I'm worshiping David Seclair, as some commenters have said, or putting him on a pedestal, as another one said. That's just not true. That's going too far the other way. I'm trying to be fair and balanced on this and reasonable. You know, I literally uh, take NMN because of David Seclair, and I can't ignore that fact. And the NMN I take has helped me tremendously after being exposed to a fake NMN. So I've dealt with the safety issues. However, no one's talking about safety with this topic. No one's trying to say that NMN hasn't been safe, nor have been there have there been any claims that NMN is not safe. What was under threat was the safety of the supply of NMN. The supply was under threat uh, of losing its protection, not the supplement itself. And what has upset the public and many consumers out there was that they are taking NMN, they're making a choice to take NMN, a natural supplement that exists in foods and that people willingly want to take for their health. And this was under threat. I don't know why he skewed that into safety, but it's really a twisting of the intentions that supplement companies and the consumers out there that are upset about this have been expressing. Now, he says, I want to make very clear that while NAD boosters such as NMN have become popular as supplements, in part because of my research, I am not and have not in any way been involved as an owner, co-founder, investor, shareholder, marketer, spokesman, or sponsor of any company that sells NED boosters as supplements. Yeah, but you are an owner, co-founder of a company that's trying to take those supplements off the market. So this, this whole paragraph is wrong. It's, it's just misleading. It's misleading at best because 
you know, no, you haven't been involved with supplements. You're trying to get them removed so you can sell them as drugs. That doesn't make you completely unbiased. It, it just doesn't, as, as he tries to imply. It's, the whole thing seems weird. Okay, the FDA's decision was preceded by a letter from Metro Biotech, a company I co-founded but do not manage or control, pointing out that the company had begun clinical trials with a special crystalline form of NMN that is stable and made under FDA drug standards. The FDA's letter is based on the Food and Drug Cosmetic Act, which states the term dietary supplement does not include an article authorized for investigation as a new drug. Now, I've covered this topic. Their definition of dietary supplement and their definition of drug are very different than the commonly accepted definitions that the public around the world has. And now he's just drawing attention to this uh, flawed law. It's a flawed act. This must be overturned, and it's going to be looked at by the next session of Congress. So he's bringing up something that is actually a weakness uh, of the industry and a weakness of the FDA that really needs to be remedied. Um, talking about a special crystalline form of NMN that is stable, well, current forms of NMN that are sold are stable. So it, how special is his NMN? I don't know. In other words, if a clinical trial of a substance has been initiated, it cannot be classified as a dietary supplement. Yes, we understand that. In its action, the FDA is in line with its own regulations, which do not allow for the authorization of a substance to be classified as a dietary supplement if it has already been cleared by the FDA for clinical trials. Again, he's just repeating himself, doubling down on this, and there must be a reason why. There must be a reason why he's really defending the FDA here or stating their rules and intentions. And again, stating that a substance or an ingredient in this case uh, is no longer a dietary supplement just because it, it might be beneficial to, to people's health. I mean, that's really what they're saying here. It's ludicrous. It's absurd. Um, it flies in the face of all reason and all logic, and it flies in the face of consumer and public interest, which I believe Congress is going to address in the next session, among other things, by the way. Uh, I remain enthusiastic about the science of NED boosters and their promise of improving human health. Furthering that science and the prospect of cellular age reversal continues to be my life's work, which includes helping other researchers perform clinical trials to address medical conditions like glaucoma, kidney failure, frailty, and rare diseases such as Friedrich's ataxia. Human clinical trials conducted by Metro Biotech or on NMN have produced promising results, some of which are published and some under peer review. What's that got to do with taking supplements off the market, uh, trying to own a supplement and turn it into a drug just because it can be treated for some conditions. Again, this is legal language that it seems to be geared towards attorneys and the FDA and not towards the public where he posted it. This is, there's a purpose behind this. What, where this letter is short on message, it's long on signaling. It's signaling a lot. We know all of this. None of this is news. But there is a message in here that I think is very big news. Some of you may have caught it already. The important work of bringing NMN to market as an FDA-approved medication is in the best interest of the tens of millions of people who suffer, who suffer from and will succumb to aging-related diseases. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a second. Why does it have to be a drug for people to benefit from it? Why? The FDA standards for testing quality control and efficacy are among the most responsible consumer protection regulations in the world. In other words, you must have the FDA. Otherwise, you're just not safe. All consumers deserve the trust, safety, and reliability that comes with appropriate regulation and oversight. This is a pro, this is propaganda. This is pro-government agency propaganda. This isn't someone's personal opinion about a supplement. This isn't a scientist's opinion about the efficacy of NMN. This is very strong language uh, promoting a government agency, and it's really strange. But still, it's not the biggest part of the message. You know, I know this is a, a, a strange letter um, that people are reading, making different readings of, but I think this is the strongest point. 
Whether NMN will remain on the supplement market is not yet known, but another molecule, NAC, which is sold both as a supplement and prescribed as a medicine for basically Tylenol overdosing and as a, an agent for rep uh, respiratory diseases, fell under the same law and remains on the U.S. supplement market. Now, what is so interesting about that is why would he address this? Why would he bring up this? Uh, others have brought it up, so he's bringing it up. So it's, not, it's nothing new here. Why is it being brought up here? Thank you for your patience, blah, 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 highest priority. And then it's signed David. He's now a mononym, like Prince, Elvis. He's just David. I just, just signed it, David. I think that second to last paragraph, the one about the, the supplement market, it's not known, but it, you know, bringing up NAC is an acknowledgement that the FDA has already informed them that they're going to release this decision. And this letter is simply his way of kind of trying to change the argument. He's trying to make this about the FDA. It's not really me. He's talking about the FDA and almost all of it. They're mentioned in four paragraphs out of eight. And uh, this really isn't even about Metro Biotech. Um, it's not even about David Sinclair. It's about the FDA. This letter is about the FDA. And at first I thought it's like the FDA must have asked him to write this letter. But the more I've thought about it, the more I, be I personally believe that this letter is to reframe the discussion. It's all of us, and we're just all responding to the FDA. I'm one of you. I'm with you. It's the, this is how the FDA works, guys. You know, and I'm not even part of micro. I didn't even make the decisions at Metro Biotech. You know, I'm, I'm just a co-founder. I'm just the science guy, right? So it, all of it is a repositioning. Why would they reposition? Because as I said, I believe NMN will remain for sale, as I've been saying all along, as a supplement based on what happened with NAC and CBD before that. They are not in a political climate. The atmosphere right now is so charged that the FDA is not going to pit itself against a million citizens who are taking a supplement. They're not going to have midnight raids. They're not going to instruct the FBI to have midnight raids on supplement companies and, you know, rip NMN jars uh, out of people's hands that are going out to old ladies. You know, <laughs> they're, they're just not going to fight this battle right now, nor should they. I'll tell you, there, there, there are so many things coming. Reform of FDA is what's coming. If you listen to Dan Fabricant, he's going beyond this. He's talked on November 22nd about HSAs, health savings accounts, money, tax-free money that employees put away. The employers put that money away for their employees to spend on medical drugs and, and uses when they need them. But you can't use that money right now for supplements. And so the discussion that's going to go on in the next session of Congress, and this is a guy who used to work at the FDA, Dan Fabricant, who, who I've mentioned before, who recommended NMN companies should continue selling NMN. He used to oversee the supplement division of the, NM, of the FDA. So his words do carry some weight, and he, he's testified before Congress before, and he's getting ready to go testify again on behalf of the Natural Products Association, which is a trade organization that represents the supplement industry. So there's a lot going on here besides just NMN. There's a lot more at stake here. There's reform of the FDA, and I don't think FDA wants to fight for NMN with the public and be in court over NMN at a time when Congress is looking at their whole organization, their whole agency, and saying, we need to make some changes. We need to change the law. The laws are no longer benefiting their constituents. So that's what I think is going on. But why do I feel so strongly that, uh, that we've won this interim battle? As I said a long time, we will, and other people, because other executives were telling me that we were going to win. Uh, at least to get this enforcement discretion. I believe it because he no longer refers to NMN as MIB-626, which is the only thing he's been calling it for the past few months. He's never even uttered the term NMN until now. And now it's the most mentioned term in this letter. In fact, he no longer even refers to it when he talks about their special drug that they're developing. It's a special form of NMN. 
So he went from not even referring it to NMN to suddenly referring it. That's because it's NMN again. The artist formerly known as MIB626 is now again NMN, says the mononym David. So my take on this is that we've won the interim. I've said before, I don't think this is what winning looks like. I think the FDA needs to pull drug ads. I think the FDA needs to get, get better oversight over the supplement industry to protect us from fake supplements. Uh, maybe the FCC needs to get involved in that because I don't know that the FDA has enough muscle to crack down on multi-billion dollar organizations that are selling fake NMNs like Amazon. So a lot needs to happen, but I think we've just seen, I think what we're seeing in this letter and what it represents is the first step of, of what a victory sounds like for the supplement companies and for the public, for most importantly, the consumers, you guys, me, to keep taking NMN that we're comfortable with. And um, we're gonna take a look at the fake NMNs that are still out there, that are still being sold. Even the brand that I used to take is still being sold in the U.S., although it's pulled from Amazon here in Germany. It's still being sold in the U.S. So I'm going to turn my attention to that and some of the other supplements I take. I actually meant to make a video today about fisetin or collagen. There are, there are other things I have to talk about about supplements, and I'll just have to save that for a few days from now um, because this letter came up and it was uh, time to respond to it. So guys, keep enjoying your holiday season. I'll be back soon.